The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to Lesson 20. I am Fobang Emmanuel, your chemistry teacher. Our lesson today is under the topic matter, properties and transformation and under the subtopic chemistry of the elements, precisely sulfur. Under this subtopic, we have the following lessons. Sulfur, occurrence and extraction. Sulfur, properties and allotropes. Compounds of sulfur, laboratory preparation of sulfur dioxide and uses. Compounds of sulfur, properties of sulfur dioxide and tests for the gas. Compounds of sulfur, sulfides of sodium and ion. Compounds of sulfur, hydrogen sulfide. Compounds of sulfur, laboratory preparation of sulfuric acid and uses, and reactions of sulfuric acid and uses of sulfur. Before we proceed with our lesson for today, let us correct the assignment we had in the previous lesson. Question number one. Hard water is water that does not easily lather when mixed with soap. A. Identify the species that cause the hardness of water. The species that cause the hardness of water include the hydrogen carbonate, the chloride, and the sulfate of magnesium and calcium. B. State three methods by which the hardness of water can be removed. Hardness of water can be removed by boiling, it can be removed by the addition of calcium hydroxide. It can also be removed by the addition of washing soda, that is sodium hydrogen carbonate. C. What is scum? Scum is an insoluble solid that is formed when the ions of magnesium and calcium react with soap. So when you use hard water, and it comes in contact with soap, some white or gray solid particles are produced, and these particles are known as scum. According to this equation, scum can be formed when the calcium ion in hard water reacts with the ions that are part of soap. For example, the octadecanoid ion. So when calcium ion reacts with the octadecanoid ion, the result is the formation of calcium octadecanoid, or in other words, scum. Question number two. The temporary hardness of water can be removed by boiling. A. Write an equation to show how this is carried out. The temporary hardness of water is caused by the presence of the hydrogen carbonate of calcium and magnesium. So when calcium hydrogen carbonate in hard water is heated, what happens is that it decomposes to produce calcium carbonate, a solid, water and carbon dioxide. So this type of hardness caused by the hydrogen carbonate is caused by, it is known as temporary hardness because it can easily be removed by boiling. 
B, state three advantages and three disadvantages of hard water. Advantages. Hard water has a pleasant taste. Hard water promotes the formation of bone and teeth because of the presence of calcium ions. Hard water also cuts down lead poisoning. Disadvantages. Hard water wastes soap. Given that it does not easily lather when mixed with soap, it entails the use of much more soap when you are using hard water. It causes the blockage of hot water pipes. It destroys the fineness or the quality of some fabrics. C. Explain how hard water could bring about the blockage of hot water pipes. When hard water containing calcium hydrogen carbonate decomposes, or when calcium hydrogen carbonate in hard water decomposes, the result is the formation of calcium carbonate, which is insoluble. And as this decomposition reaction continues over time, this insoluble calcium carbonate is deposited a little at a time until a layer of calcium carbonate is formed. And the more this layer is formed, the area through which water can pass through a pipe gradually reduces until the pipe can become blocked. Lesson 20, sulfur, occurrence and extraction. Lesson plan. We are going to look, follow this plan for this lesson. We have the lesson objectives, the prerequisite, real life situation, activities, evaluation, assignment, and references. Lesson objectives. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify different sources of sulfur in nature. Describe the extraction of sulfur by the fresh process. State the property of sulfur that makes its extraction by the fresh process possible. And explain why sulfur is not mined. Prerequisites. You can understand this lesson because you are already aware that sulfur is a non-metallic element. You already know its location in the periodic table. And you know that heat is one of the factors that could bring about a physical change such as melting. Real life situation. During the manufacture of some skin care products, a yellow solid that could exist freely or combined in nature is usually added because of its properties. Identify this yellow solid and describe its occurrence. Before this lesson comes to an end, we are going to revisit this real life situation to identify the solid and, and describe where we can actually find it in nature. Activities. Yellowstone, which is sold in our local market, is an element. Identify this element and state its electronic configuration. Have you ever wondered what the chemical composition of Yellowstone is? Yellowstone is an element, sulf is the element sulfur, and its electronic configuration is 286. So the Yellowstone that we find in our local market is an element, and that element is sulfur, and it's Electronic configuration is 2, 8, and 6. 2. What do you observe when Yellowstone is heated to a temperature above 120 degrees Celsius? When Yellowstone is heated, what happens is that it melts, forming molten or liquid sulfur. And this liquid sulfur appears red in color. But if this red liquid sulfur at a high temperature is allowed to cool, it's going to solidify 
and our yellow solid we had at the beginning is going to be formed. Three, place yellow stone in superheated water and observe what happens. Superheated water is water that exists at the, as a liquid at temperatures above 100 degrees Celsius. When yellow stone is placed in superheated water, it melts. That means it becomes a liquid, but at the same time, it does not dissolve in the superheated water. Sulfur occurrence and extraction. This lesson has two parts. We are going to look at the occurrence of sulfur, and after that, we'll look at the extraction of sulfur. One, occurrence of sulfur. Sulfur is a yellow non metallic solid that is located in group six in the periodic table and in period three. From this image, we can see some yellow solid particles of different sizes. These particles are actually sulfur particles. So sulfur, an element, exists as a yellow solid and it is a known metal. It is located in group 6 of the periodic table and is found in period theory. This is a summary of its atomic number and its mass number. The symbol for sulfur is S, its atomic number is 16, and its mass number is 32. Sulfur is a yellow solid and it has been known since ancient times. Over 2000 years BC, sulfur was already known and it was called brine stone. It is the 10th most abundant element in the universe. So it is a very, very abundant element. It is odorless, but most of its compounds have a very, very strong smell. That means if you take a piece of the yellow, yellow stone and you smell it, you don't get any particular smell. But when that yellow stone undergoes chemical reactions, most often the compounds that are formed have very, very strong odors. When sulfur exists in the liquid state or in the molten state, it is red in color. But when it solidifies, it becomes yellow again. Another interesting fact about sulfur is that sulfur is an essential element for life. Given that it is a component of some amino acids, which can combine to form proteins. For example, cysteine and methionine contain sulfur. Now, let us ask ourselves the question, where can we find sulfur in nature? One of the sources or one of the ways in which sulfur occurs in nature is as underground sulfur beds. Sulfur exists on combined in nature in large yellow deposits in underground sulfur beds. That means as you go through the soil profile, at a certain layer, you could find a large deposit of sulfur, and such is known as an underground sulfur bed. Sulfur can also be found in amino acids and proteins. For example, the amino acid cysteine and methionine contain sulfur as one of their main components. And if these amino acids containing sulfur are pre re combined with many other amino acids, they can form proteins which contain sulfur. Sulfur can also be found in nature as a component of several minerals. So it exists in minerals combined with metals. For example, galena, which is lead to sulfide, is a mineral that contains sulfur. So this mineral is very important because it is a source of lead. But apart from lead, it also contains sulfur. Zinc blend is another mineral 
that contains sulfur. And this mineral is the major source from which zinc is obtained. So from this image, we can be able to see the color of zinc then. It has black crystals, while galena primarily consists of gray or, or, or silver-like crystals. Another mineral in which we could find sulfur is what we call iron pyrite. This particular mineral is interesting because it looks like gold. So it has been given the name fool's gold. During mining, miners could come across it thinking that it is gold, but it is not gold. And then we also have gypsum, which is calcium sulfate with the two modes of water of crystallization. It also contains sulfur. We also have copper pyrite, which is a mineral from which copper is obtained. And this mineral contains sulfur as well. We have cinnabar, which is high, which is mercury sulfide, which is red in color, and it also contains sulfur. So these minerals are minerals from which metals are extracted, but at the same time, they contain sulfur as a major component. Another source of sulfur is, in, is crude oil and natural gas. Sulfur makes about 0.1 to 6 weight percent of crude oil. So it is, a, it is very important or it is a major component of crude oil. And uh, it is also present in natural gas. Natural gas is mainly methane, CH4. So natural gas often contains hydrogen sulfide. In volcanic gas as well, sulfur is always present or is often present in the form of hydrogen sulfide and sulfur dioxide. And in areas where we have hot springs, we can also find sulfur. Two, extraction of sulfur. Sulfur is extracted from underground sulfur beds by a process known as the fresh process. This process is named after the scientists who developed it. And during this fresh process, a sulfur pump is used. The advantage of this method is that sulfur obtained has about 90 9.5 to 99.9 .9 percentage purity and most often requires no further purification for most of its uses or applications. So the sulfur pump has a diameter of about 20 centimeters and it is made up of three concentric steel pipes. These pipes are known as the outermost pipe, we have the middle pipe, and then we have the innermost pipe. So these three concentric steel pipes constitute what we call the sulfur pump. And we are going to find out the purpose of each of these three pipes. During extraction of sulfur by the fresh process, a hole with a diameter of about 30 centimeters is drilled through different soil layers onto the sulfur bed. And after that hole has been drilled, the sulfur pump is sunk into the hole and through the outermost pipe, superheated water is sent in to melt the sulfur bed. And this superheated water exists at a very high temperature, that's 170 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 10 atmospheres. So the primary purpose of the superheated water is to melt the sulfur bed. And this is possible because the melting point of sulfur is 115 degrees Celsius. So water at 170 degrees Celsius can melt the sulfur, which has melting point 115 degrees Celsius. It is because of the fact that sulfur has this melting point that it can be extracted using this method. The innermost pipe is the pipe through which we blow in hot compressed air. 
And the purpose of the hot compressed air is to force the molten sulfur, the melted sulfur, out to the surface. This hot compressed air in the innermost pipe and the superheated water in the outermost pipe help to keep the sulfur in the liquid state as it rises to the surface. Let us find out the purpose of the middle pipe. The middle pipe has as a role to convey or to transfer molten sulfur from the underground sulfur bed to the surface. When the molten sulfur with water gets to the surface, they are collected in steel tanks and allowed to get cool. And after cooling, the sulfur solidifies and is separated from water by decantation. So we have, on this image, we have the, a, a, a diagram of the sulfur pump. We have the innermost pipe through which we have hot compressed air. We have the outermost pipe through which we have superheated water. And then we have the middle pipe through which we have molten sulfur rising to the surface. So when the superheated water gets to the sulfur bed, it melts the sulfur and the hot compressed air pushes the sulfur out to the surface through the middle pipe. Why is sulfur not mined? There are several reasons that account for the fact that sulfur is not mined. The first is that the mine, the, the mine can collapse or the sulfur bed can collapse, killing miners. Another reason is that during the mining of sulfur, poisonous gases like hydrogen sulfide and sulfur dioxide are produced and this can be inhaled by miners. Mining of sulfur is also very tedious and expensive. And lastly, the sulfur obtained by mining is of lower purity. When we carry out the French process, we obtain sulfur that is about 99% pure. But through mining, the sulfur obtained is of lower purity. Before we end, let us revisit our real life situation. During the manufacture of some skincare products, a yellow solid that exists freely or combined in nature is really added based on its properties. Identify this yellow solid and describe its occurrence. Identification. This yellow solid is sulfur, which is a group six element with atomic number 16. Occurrence. It occurs combined with certain metals in minerals such as iron pyrite, galena, copper pyrite, gypsum, cinnabar, and zinc blend. It also occurs on combined as underground sulfur beds. And it's a component of some amino acids, for example, cysteine and methionine. Thus, it is a component of some proteins. It is also part of crude oil, and in natural gas, it is present as hydrogen sulfide. It is a component of volcanic gas in the form of hydrogen sulfide and sulfur dioxide, and it can also be found in areas where there are hot springs. Recall, sulfur is a non-metallic element that occurs freely in nature in underground sulfur beds. It is a constituent of several minerals, including galena, zinc gland, and copper pyrite. It is extracted by a process known as the French process using a sulfur pump. Superheated water is sent into the is sent in to melt the sulfur bed through the outermost pipe while hot compressed air is blown through the innermost pipe during the fresh process. And through the middle pipe, the sulfur is conveyed to the surface. During this fresh process, the superheated water is at a temperature of 170 degrees Celsius and under a pressure of 10 atmospheres. And the hot compressed air is at a pressure of 15 atmospheres. And this high pressure forces the molten sulfur through the middle pipe. Mining 
of sulfur is very tedious and expensive and produces sulfur of lower purity. So the fresh process is preferred. Evaluation. Question number one. Sulfur is an element of group six of the periodic table. It exists on combined as an on, as underground sulfur bed and is extracted by the fresh process. A. State its atomic and mass numbers. The atomic number of sulfur is 16 and its mass number is 32. B. What is the color and state of sulfur at ordinary temperature? Sulfur is a solid at ordinary temperature and its color is yellow. C. State the electronic configuration of sulfur and identify the period to which it belongs. Sulfur has electronic configuration 286, thus it belongs to period theory of the periodic table. D. Give three reasons why sulfur is not mined. Sulfur is not mined because the sulfur bed can collapse, killing miners. Poisonous gases such as hydrogen sulfide and sulfur dioxide are produced and can be inhaled, and this endangers the health of miners. And then the mining process is very tedious and costly. Two, describe the fresh process for the extraction of sulfur. During the fresh process, sulfur is extracted from underground sulfur beds. And this is based on the fact that it has a low melting point of 115 degrees Celsius. And uh, during this process, a sulfur pump is used, which consists of three concentric steel pipes. Superheated water is sent through the outermost pipe to melt the sulfur bed, and hot compressor is blown through the innermost pipe to force the molten sulfur to the surface. The molten sulfur then rises through the middle pipe and is collected in steel tanks at the surface. And uh, on the surface, after the molten sulfur solidifies, it is separated from water by decantation. And uh, the sulfur stays as a liquid during this extraction process because of the superheated water in the outermost pipe and the hot compressed air in the innermost pipe. This method is advantageous because the sulfur obtained is of high purity. Assignment. Question number one. Sulfur exists freely in nature and also combined with metals in some minerals. A. Name three minerals that contain sulfur. B. By what process is sulfur extracted from underground sulfur beds? C. State the purpose of each pipe in the sulfur pump. Question number two. This question concerns the extraction of sulfur. A. What prevents sulfur from solidifying during the extraction using the sulfur pump? B. What property of sulfur permits it to be extracted by the fresh process? C. State the temperature and pressure of the superheated water and the hot compressed air. As references, we used Understanding Chemistry by GK Kist and collaborators, Chemistry by Robert C. Fee, and Ordinary Level Chemistry for Cameroon Schools by NJ Novaga. Our next lesson will be Sulfur Properties and Allotropes. See you in the next lesson. Una tege si matege yop, una tege minga matege nyum, una tege majang matege ndom, mane tambia niña ne injubia yen, gani bana matege mut, gani la kiri watege ndom, esa kina bia jinkido, mane tambia niña ne injubia yen, tam tama mote tam zabike. Tam tama tonge tam zabike tam tam tama mote tam zabike mane tambia niña ne injo biayen